lot of what came to be defined as civil service reform was also very much about the fiscal aspects of what was called establishment management. You're thinking about improving the civil service, the core government uh, functions. Um, in many countries where the human resource endowment is quite weak, capacity is low broadly in the society at large, how does government or how does civil, the civil service itself become an engine for development if in fact it's, it's plagued by the same kinds of problems that the country is at large? The basic thrust of these pay and employment reforms were trying to correct public pay and employment syndrome. Nobody really knew how many people were working in government. The establishment control mechanisms were completely out of whack. The payroll was uh, filled with ghost workers. A lot of these reforms that the bank was promoting had to do with installing formal, transparent procedures, often exams. It's not about the job you do. It's not about the function that you're carrying out. Pay and employment rationalization reforms were undertaken largely in the beginning through these structural adjustment programs which were on a short leash. The money would be deposited directly and immediately into the Treasury. It wasn't just the pay and employment reforms that had a hard time. It was also some of these attempts to introduce merit-based practice in uh, client governments. Almost every one of these reforms found was that uh, civil service part of the new public management agenda was hollow. Uh, again, it might have been formal, but it wasn't really followed in, um, in reality. One thing is just about aid and the aid model. What happens often is that those projects siphon off the best people from government. These projects are basically poaching people from the civil service, either would-be civil servants or civil servants who've just, who just had it and are, decide to go work for an aid project itself. Donors uh, have a collective action problem. What was really difficult were the politics and resistance and, and opposition to a lot of the reforms that were going to be um, resulting in winners and losers. The pretty profound debate that has been kind of raging about whether the, the clients of the World Bank that have been the recipients of these kinds of reform investments are ready. I mean, that sounds a bit condescending, and I think there's always a pushback on the part of countries that, you know, why, why should we ad adopt these Western systems? I think that would be useful to do is to kind of establish some kind of comparative data uh, framework so that we can start to think about performance in a more rigorous way. Instead of going into their own projects, they could pool their funds and send it right into the budget so that they're actually supporting the institutions you know, uh, civil service institutions and others in, in the country context.